So, what else what, came out this month? So what else came out this month? Um, Steven Spielberg's reimagining of Peter Pan. Oh, that's oh, just oh. oh yeah, no, that's a, you know huh. that movie. I have a very strong association with Stargate because I, I rented both of those movies from the public library when I was a kid at the same time. So like I saw them both and I really liked them both. Hmm. Oof. You really like Hook? Yeah, What's no, wrong I with do. Stargate. No, I, I've never seen Stargate, but um, oh. you went to both. Yeah, no, Stargate's a good movie. It? I've never seen Stargate. You're doing that? Yeah, yeah. Like um, I, I, I love the movie more than I'd love the TV series. Oh, yeah. Look, if it was actually centered around the title character, I would have liked. It was because Dustin Hoffman is perfect in the role. Robin yes. Williams miscast. No, and perfect. Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell annoying. You just mm. don't like Robin Williams. Or I do Williams. like Robin Williams. I like his darker period. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but this this movie is what, but like for a for a fan, like a family kids movie, like it's it's good. It's all right. It gets yeah. the job done. Shuts the kids up for like two mm. hours. It is a that's little... that's a horrible rationale for why you're. Like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, like, then you take them out and like they have fun. Me and, they, and Hook are the best parts of the movie. The hook pinball game and like well, let's play the hook pinball game and let's like uh play the video game at the arcade of four hook and let's like make the fat black kid roll like a weapon because that's part of the oh, game right yeah that was like remember i just oh. i just set up a lot of memories yeah so many memories do you like hook jeff and then everybody i like, didn't see it until i was an adult so like i was in college the first time i saw hook so and it's, it's like so you don't it, have, you don't have I, it wasn't bad but it hit differently than okay. seeing it as a kid yeah um so it like it it's was weird. definitely it's a, it's a very well, it, it, it was though. it hit me m- less as a peter pan story and more as an aging story yeah which yeah. is what it was meant for as the you know for the parents who were taking their kids to see it oh and it's, it's, it's no, no it's goonies for adults right that's why i don't like it it's yeah. goonies for adults <laughs> I I it is. I, like, look at the set design it's i very- didn't i didn't like it but i wouldn't rewatch it voluntarily let's yeah. just be honest it's in the I lower did not spectrum. like it sorry it's in the lower spectrum of spielberg movies can we agree on that at least i mean yeah it's, it's on, it is on the lower end but i still appreciate it i still like it i'm I, like i I'm still have my middle. attachment like i like i like the little bits here or there where we're like uh where uh, like Hook and uh, what's the name Smee. of me? Smee. Smee's like, Bob sir, Hoskins. sir. Bob Hoskins. Like, yeah, Bob Hop- Hoskins. He's like, sir, sir, I have an apostrophe. He's like, you, you mean an, an epiphany? Yeah, those are the best scenes when it was Dustin Hoffman and Bob Hoskins. Yeah, like, yeah. There, there, yeah, were, there, were, there were, there were, it's like, there, as a whole, like, looking back, like, I like I haven't seen it in a while. So, like, I'm solely going going on my attachment to it. But, like, you know, like you, get, like, you get those little moments where, like, okay, all right, this is a good, it's good, good little interaction cheeky little jokes the delivery was like okay i just think the it goes on a little fun. too long yeah. that's all it, it is it is very protracted could have been tighter they're yeah. in london but like, good long but time like, let's, let's spielberg yeah. stuff in general like yeah. watching a spielberg movie is an investment in your evening because it's You're two right. and a half hours minimum yeah schindler's list is like four hours long right that yeah but that you don't feel the length as much i don't know i don't think so i think some it's of the, the movies the movies that like Jeff is talking about, like the fluffier stuff, that should be tighter. Like the terminal. <laughs> well, the terminal is pretty good, but Big um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but like, I just don't mind any of these films we've talked about. It's like Minority Report. <laughs> it's, criticism. A it's a character choice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Hook came out. I don't. I don't know how it fared. I can't hook. believe you're not hooked on Hook. Very opinion. Not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. Never was, not even as a kid. Oh, that's fine. Um, it could be my disdain for Julia Roberts. Take it. I think it's mostly that. Um, she's distraction. She takes you out of the movie. Better movie came out called The Last Boy Scout. Shane Black script, buddy, buddy action comedy, which is part of our forte. So, like, you guys in Bruce Willis situation? and wait, Damon Wayans. Uh, are the are, are, wait uh, is is it about like two guys in a bad situation because they, they were in the boys? Yes, two good guys right in a bad situation. So they're going so they're going after their uh their their uh their uh, troop leader to uh no kill it's a, it's, it's a friend he, he, he uh, diddled them wrong when they were young and like they need they need justice and then like 
he needs justice because like we didn't know yet. He's also... couldn't be further off if you try. What? I'm, what? We didn't know yet. Like, like I'm going based on my knowledge of the Boy Scouts today. I'm it has like, nothing to do with the Boy Scouts. Scouts. <laughs> it was around the turn of the century when we started getting those scout leaders. No, um, oh, I can, no, no, don't wait. No, 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 hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. What oh, did you yeah. say? You had the rail the whole show. Did right you just now. say turn of the century? Yeah. 21 years ago no no the 20 the turn of the century was the last century yeah 19, the 1900s and the 20 into the 20th not 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 what we just hijacked no 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 you do not say that <laughs> we do not that. say what is wrong with you i've been trying to get someone to get this upset for a while i keep doing that to people and no one bats an eye the like, turn of the century 20 years ago like what era like you know you know what like connotations that should stir yeah up. the cotton gin oh, came out this year my mom used no, to say yeah. to her students that she'd be like, yeah, I was born last century. And they'd be like, oh, my God, you're old. And she'd be like, yes, yeah, so were you idiots. <laughs> like, well, yeah, there was so, so something someone was referring to, uh, you know, how their mom was born in the late 1990s or something mm-hmm. or in the late ten, late 1900s. Oh. OK. God so, damn. I, I had a neighbor that was God. like uh, 100, 100 and a. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it? She, she, she was she, like 103. They were all born uh, in the like, late 1900s. Like between between like 100, 104 and 109, somewhere like that. She was like she was up to and like she was surprised. Fuck. And like um, like that. Like it's like okay, if you were if she like if she said I was born at the turn of the century, I was like yeah, no, you definitely were. And how how are you so like just like peppy? Like what's going on? She's like yeah, no, I'm just in my backyard picking berries, planting it back when I was a kid. I'm like. This, this, your whole life we had none of these trees when i was a child like your whole life you've been picking berries from that tree in your backyard that's crazy yeah imagine that's spend, the turn of the century imagine spending a century in south plainfield i feel like we're spending a century talking about this south plainfield isn't even a century old it was someone yeah. something else before that okay what's what's the next one? so anyway oh god there's more <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah i interjected i'm sorry can we keep this in? Um, like Bugsy, ago. the Warren Beatty epic. Oh, Bugsy. About Bug, yeah. Uh, is this, Bugsy's this, Eagle. About this movie who, helped, who, who helped uh, create what we know as Las Vegas. Oh. oh. I bet you didn't know that backstory about it, did you? No. If you had Wait, seen Bugsy, movie, Bugsy, Bugsy, Bugsy Malone? Yes, yeah. what this is about. Oh, Bugsy Malone? Yeah. I know my, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with my gangster history. <laughs> Yeah, so it's actually a it's actually a, a glossy, very uh, sophisticated, um, different kind of role for uh, Warren Bay. I mean, obviously he's a uh, he's very slick and suave and handsome and debonair, but um, you get to see kind of the, uh, the the seedier side of Warren Beatty in this. And this is the movie where he met Annette Bening. Yeah. So started that whole relationship. Really good movie. Been going on for thirty years. Yeah. Uh, great movie, worth checking out. Um, who remake. Was the, um, who was the character that um, uh, I lost his name? Ben Kingsley. Yeah, Ben. ben who's Ben Kingsley playing? Meyer Lansky. Yeah. Oh, See, I knew you'd like that. Oh, yeah. that's Ben. Ben <laughs> Billy. He got an Oscar nomination for it. Yeah, that's interesting. I got okay. I got to see this. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like. Yeah, I was trying but to present it to you. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to show it to you without you realizing. I'm so you so get like, surprised during the film. Yeah, I mean, you know, directed by Barry Levinson. So. I'm still, I'm still gonna be, I'm still probably We're still gonna, gonna be impressed soon. and surprised. I think you'll it. like it. We'll try to watch it before like, the best time uh, so we can include it. You know, yeah, like, it's like this, this is one. This is one they're building up and developing. Uh, Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. This is this is gonna be a fun part of this. Yeah, you're gonna like that because like uh, this is this is this is after uh, after uh, we lost Cuba. Mm-hmm. Right, like okay, we're going to Vegas. Oh yeah, all that, all that. Uh, like uh, I don't know. In there. This is like around the time when, like, uh, also like uh, a couple of times, Myers Myers Lansky was like brought to like a uh, trial at like DC or some shit like that. Yep. And like they were like, so you're getting involved in gambling, blah blah blah, yada yada. Like, uh, are you up to criminal activity? It's like no, no, like I mean he is, but like you know he's he's on point. What so, is this like, man? It's like, it's like Billy but, like, Bathgate. but then like uh, he gets yeah. no no but the thing is like a very like for like s- historical thing so uh myers lansky is just sitting there and it's like it's like 
and one of the uh, uh, senators or whatever the representative that got him on this trial. He's just like Myers Lansky turns is like a uh, representative or judge or who I don't again don't remember some some square. He was like, but sir, I I've seen you at the uh, uh, like the horse track, so I know you like to gamble. And I was like, it was, but like the guy responded back was like, but like I don't want to see like you guys doing it. And like Myers Lansky, like however that guy meant it, he probably meant like you criminals. But like how he took it, it was like, oh no, you meant us Jews and us Italians, us people that like you know came and got stuck in the streets and like you know we got smart and like you want to, mm, yeah. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I get. I get. You're gonna I get, like. You're gonna like Ben Kingsley. I, I. I get. I get really. I get. Just, yeah. Oh. Yeah. This movie's up Jimmy's alley. So. Right up my alley. Uh, this movie. This next it. movie might not be up his alley, but um, it's a sweet, good-natured film. A remake. Uh, Father of the Bride with Steve Martin. Oh. Oh. Classic film. Mm. You think everyone so? Already, everyone our age always loves it that I talk to if I bring it up. Oh, I don't. Yeah. You know, oh like, wow. Right. I think it's boring. Really? Yeah, I really think really? it's boring. I, I, like, I've never seen it. Because like my, my family... It's like, a transition period between when Steve Martin was the wild and crazy guy, mm-hmm. and now he's trying to do a little more like serial comic stuff. Yeah. Well, he's in his like, uh, his, like his later, his pre-retirement phase. So like he's like uh, going to the uh going into is like what, 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 what niche roles can he get into that like will be easy for him to... Uh, do yeah, he and like and he's old enough he can't do like physical that, that comedy, dad. so he's doing that like yeah like simple twist of fate leap of faith stuff like that yeah i mean we loved him in what what did we do earlier this year the um la story la story oh well the la story if we had more stuff like that uh growing up in the gonna, night, pretty good yeah uh by the time we get the bow finger it's kind of a return to his glory days stuff like that true yeah. i mean you can kind of get those vibes with like you know uh animaniacs and like freakazoid just a little bit but like it's the cartoon so they get zany with it yeah and like interesting they they, they do inject a little bit more like a like a little bit more sophisticated and adult humor in those cartoons but like just enough to be like to just get by and also again this is this is the uh freakazoid is going to be really really zany because apparently steve martin in real life is very urbane wit Mm-hmm. he's like an art connoisseur this is more like steve martin in real life whereas what the audience members want is what you, you what you just did mugging and a lot of physical comedy so i guess he's more comfortable doing these types of roles and he's trying to transition into that so this is yeah. well he he kind of wanted to do the martin short that. thing and i think martin short would have been better as like the father but i think maybe martin short wasn't getting the box office draw per se so they wanted someone that people would like more i don't know right yeah. thought like this i'm just going a, a little bit further down the years like um martin short was in jungle the jungle who's the main like tim, tim allen, allen? Oh, okay all right okay for some yeah. reason like you said martin short and i just jumped up ahead like like he like he played like he started playing dads more often in the, uh in the 90s too yeah well and, he's the uh hairdresser and father of the bride yeah yes so, he is yeah. yeah so so he's zany which and they're friends in real life so. Yeah, well, it's it. He lets him do his thing in there, but if imagine the parts were switched, imagine Steve Martin's there. I mean, Mar- uh, Martin Short was the straight man in Captain Ron. Yeah, but did that do well? No, nobody really cared for it, and everybody. Yeah. Uh, if it is remembered, it's remembered for uh, Kurt Russell more than anything else. Right. So I think people putting them into their boxes. Steve Martin was the guy you wanted to be the father, and Martin Short was the zany, wacky character that pops in once. Yeah. Right. So I think people underrated martin short's talents because he liked to have a rubber face right and, um, well i don't know well i feel like a uh, martin short like also like considering how like he's underrated uh like when the lead is like the zany one he's like the uh, straight face one. right or, or if the lead's the straight face one he's the zany one like he, right. he can he can go back and forth because like like how how i just brought up uh jungle jungle, jungle. jungle. Like, jungle. like tim yeah. allen like he, he can be silly and goofy but like he's a little more stern and serious <laughs> like he's like like he's got blue collar dad vibes, even though he was a white collar job in that movie. But like you know, Wolf of Wall Street type deal. So like he played that kind of that kind of da- t- dad to whatever. And then like uh, Mark Short was like he's just like he was the silly, bumbling kind of dad almost, right? Mm-hmm. Or am I like I gotta watch that movie again? Yeah, you got it. Uh, we'll we'll be talking about it later in the years. Oh yeah, we're gonna okay. Yeah, well, it opens up against 
Howard Stern's private parts. I remember. Yeah. Oh, oh, which one are we going to talk about? That's funny. Um, like I seen that movie once, and I was like eleven. Private Plus. parts. Private parts. Yeah. Oh boy. Nice. Oh, can oh can we make that the main feature? Yeah, probably. It's, it's a Corey thing. I love it. Sorry, Jeff. The Jeff, you'll hear me talk passionately about another movie then. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. About nothing. <laughs> um, no, so no. probably the movie that got Oliver Stone the reputation for being conspiracy theorist, JFK, came out. Yeah, which we also tried to watch and never got to. Three hour and a half hours long. Yeah. It depends on the cut you watch, I guess. The director's cuts that long. That's what I have then, I guess. It's a it's a great movie. Honestly, it's and you know what his theories aren't that far fetched because there's so many there's so many discrepant uh, theories and statements on what could have happened during the assassination. They don't give validity to just one mm-hmm. with the Warren Commission, but they go they go into a lot of different ones. And oh boy, in terms of like ensemble cast, this is amazing. You got Kevin Costner, <clears throat> Joe Pesci shows up as Jack Ruby. Um, you got uh, Frank Langella. You got a but you got a, a whole slew of character actors. Tommy Lee Jones, Jones, Kevin Bacon. Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, who else is there? I think Gary Oldman's in it. Yeah, Gary Oldman. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was gonna ask, do you think do you think there was a second shooter? See, because I've been in uh, Daily Plaza and I've seen uh, from the vantage point. Of the uh, book depository, it's not that far fetched that he could have got off sec- two shots. Yeah, they're not that far from each other. Right. Where yeah, they, also, where like the, he was a Marine, caravan would have been. I know how to cycle a bolt action rifle. Mm-hmm. But the trajectory of the bullet is why it makes me question it. A oh, lot. There, there's a reason for that. They they don't go. Oh God, we're not getting into this, are we? Well, or... they probably <laughs> well, no, no, conspiracy. <laughs> Okay, the thing is the trajectory of the bullet is like whenever like you know the conspiracy theorists analyze the model of the car, they're analyzing the model of the car with the information they have as available at the time. They didn't know that the, that car, that specific car that Kennedy was in, uh, they identified the model correctly, but they didn't know the car, car was customized on the inside. Things were like changed up, like uh, so like uh, when Kennedy's in the uh, the back the of the longest vehicle, other uh, movie segment ever. Like he he's a uh, he's like slightly more elevated than he is so like when they're like trying to calculate for like the angle of the trajectory they're plugging in the wrong numbers they're doing it here rather than here yeah and like uh and like uh they're calculating like the tra- trajectories of like uh again based on like how kennedy got hit and how the governor of texas in front of him and the seat in front of him got hit because like i think what it was like oh, like yeah. kennedy was slightly slightly higher because he was on the back of the car and the governor the and the governor was actually slightly lower than what like uh like the measurements were off because like they were like send it and that's where the thing was like and then finally <laughs> no, yeah. no just finally. I knew what i was doing by yeah. bringing this up you know then finally like like when K- kenny gets shot with the uh bullet from the italian Procano, which shoots a smaller <clears throat> bullet than a regular rifle round pops out tumbles goes in the seat in front of him tumbles again then comes out the uh well, it doesn't even come out the governor. It goes right into him. Oh, okay. Like, it just stays like, hi, I'm going to stay in was, here. Was this, was, this funny. was this at a point where they started, like, I mean, it was it was custom, but, like, was this at a point where Jeff, you need they to started stop. making... No, I'm, I'm serious, because you look at the, no, the presidential vehicles are all bulletproof now. Was that something that, like, I, that was bounce off of something? Like, I, mean, I mean, if the, if the hood was up, then yeah. Well, yeah. I right. want to get to your signal, like but like the hood was down, <laughs> right? Like no, he would have like been, bounced off. It of was the... bulletproof, but not with the hood down. No, but I mean that like it would have bounced off of the inside of the. What the fuck are we talking about? Let's keep going. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Grand Canyon. So give oh. me a conspiracy theory about that. Speaking of, oh yeah, no aliens. <laughs> they car. They car- At one point, they, they fly. It has nothing to do with the actual Grand Canyon. Oh, the, that's misleading. Yeah, I know. that's the conspiracy. <laughs> so this is another Steve Martin movie with um. What? Uh, yes. Just Kevin Klein. What is he doing? doing it's great. supposed to be about uh, the meaning of life and what it all means, and it's. it's well, didn't he do that with the L.A. story? It's complete yeah. drivel. It's one of the worst things Lawrence Kasdan's ever done. It's horrible. It's my least favorite Steve Martin film. I hate it. It's it's. I don't hate it as bad as Corey does, but it's 
basically Kevin Klein gets uh he gets car, mugged. Yeah, he gets mugged because his car breaks down in uh South Central LA. It's like Crash after a Lakers game, oh. and it's basically Crash before Crash came out. So and privileged so, white boy gets right <laughs> exactly. So he tries to figure out the, what the meaning of life is because which crash, the ra- oh, which, so like, which crash the racism on one or the one where James Spader has sex with a car? He just goes and does. <laughs> yes, this. that's Titan. No, Crash the one with Brendan Fraser. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I wonder um, how many people are going to get that reference. It's just for us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Klein's in it though, and I thought I would like it because Kevin Klein and Steve Martin are in it. Yeah, because you think Robert. it's going to be like a successor to the Big Chill, and it's right. It's mm. very much. It, he's trying to get the feel of the Big Chill, but it's a touchy subject to center your film around. It's too abstract. It's like what? What is the meaning of life? Why? It's, why do we have these barriers between each other? And Steve Martin plays his best awful. friend, and his subplot doesn't matter. It's just a lot of self congratulatory. Isn't he just divorcing his wife, and that's his whole thing? Yeah, he's a movie producer. Yeah. I, I think. I think Which I, I feel like Kasdan is making Martin. I mean, you you could you could consider like that this whole like whole meaning of life and not delivering it very well. I thought this wasn't going to. That might be an early, early, like early stage in like American consciousness, like trying to interpret that information in the '90s. Like we're we're this like highly prosperous uh materialistic country we just won the cold war what's the meaning of life who are we gonna do it? it's a very narcissistic movie without yeah is it, i think like, as, as crappy as the movie is but like at, at how it turned out like it just kind of reflects what like a society is that is at the time really yeah you, like consider it people, and then, you, know, you might be like, right it's a very but then like you jump yeah. ahead a few uh, years later and then you get fight club and then like i think that's the time when somebody like it finally clicks like okay this is what's wrong with our generation like it took a, it took somebody to write a book and somebody to be like to read that book and then like hey let's make a movie about this well, and for it to like fully like come into like the American like consciousness. That's what this whole decade is kind of about because the early nineties are you beat the Cold War but by the end of the nineties you're like did we really beat anything? Uh, we didn't succeed over the past eight years. I mean it's, it's also where you get the nihilism from like you know grunge. Yeah, it's um it's just like to- waspy navel gazing the movie. Oh, that's yeah, that's Grand Canyon. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a yuppie nightmare where it's like, oh, you know what? Oh, yeah. Black people, they have the same problems as white people. Isn't that crazy? No, and this is after Boys in the Hood. Yeah, <laughs> it's awful. Uh, well, I mean, like, also, uh, I guess like the '90s, there was a lot, a lot more yuppie, preppy content. Like you saw, like your yeah. your heroes or dads or whatever. Like they very obviously came from like the yuppie preppy background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. means gone. Yeah, oh, yeah, the cocaine's gone, but like you know, they got that like they got like because yeah, like, they're baby boomers. They're baby you boomers. see their job titles, like they or like you see in the background of like in their office or on their car, like that like little uh, uh college uh bumper sticker or mm-hmm. thing. It's like yeah, it's like okay, all right, you're not a relatable character. All right, we'll move on. We'll just wait for the jokes to come in. Yeah. Um, Barbara Streisand directed a movie this month, Prince of Tides. Oh, I've heard this is good, but I have noticed it is good. Uh, I haven't seen it in years. Um, She plays a psychiatrist and one of her patients is a Nick Nolte who has all these repressed um, emotions about being molested as a child. He has a weirdly enough. He has a gay neighbor played by George Carlin. Really? Yeah. I got to see the movie because like it's it's called Prince of Tides. Nick Nolte. Matter of fact, I'm going to give a plug. Not that we're going to get any endorsements from this. Criterion's having a sale this month, and Prince of Tides is one of the Criterion collections. So. Really, they're on Criterion now. Yep. Huh. But it's a good movie. Uh, she's actually a pretty good director, kind of underrated. Yeah, yeah, I always liked her direction. I never really necessarily cared for her acting. I guess. Okay, fair enough. I, see, I think people love her, and I'm just like, she's good. I, I just didn't love her. So. It's a, it's a great. Maybe this will change uh, my it's a great uh, showcase for Nick Nolte. People Nolte's get role. really attached to very specific roles and just fall yeah. in love with like actors and actresses. Yeah. And no matter it's what, kind of like do. Jodie Foster in that respect. Yeah. And the female director, yeah. I think, doesn't get the credit that she deserves. Like a lot of female directors now are heralded, like Catherine Bigelow, Patty Jenkins. But there was a whole generation before that. Yeah. Look yeah. at female directors that nobody. Was Barbara Streisand, the first woman to win a Golden Globe. I think she tied. Oh, with was her. she okay? I think she tied with someone. <clears throat> maybe she tied as an actress for Hello Dolly. There's something in there where she was one of the first. Gentle, maybe. Maybe. Maybe she's the first nominee for Oscar. Mm. 
Uh, Funny girl. Yeah, I forget. There's something in there. She was a trailblazer either way. Yeah. Um, a very schmaltzy uh, chick flick came out this month. Fried green tomatoes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Kathy Bates. It's um, it's 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 a movie for the the uh, <laughs> the estrogenic sect of your life. You know, I don't know if any many men would go see this unless they're fans of like Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. That'd be <laughs> Not that movie. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, that brings us to Poster Boy. Oh, Poster Boy. He wasn't even prepared. Or like Post It Boy. Well, I thought you had one more before. I, I no. shouldn't have taken a sip. All right, my sip. All right, Jeff. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's good because. I literally just watched this movie before the podcast. So this is the this is the last chance you have to get above five hundred for the for the year. I'm sure. So your batting averages? I have no idea. I haven't done the tallying yet. We'll do that in the best stuff. He tricked us on the best of last time. I know. He's like, I tallied it up. Yeah. Lay it on me. All right. So this was last month. It's just because they were next to each other. So. Here. Wait, wait, that was a month ago we recorded that. Why is that there? That's why I, I literally just said this is last month's. I just left it up. Yeah, we recorded it a month ago. All right. Oh, I wish you blurred something out. What do you okay. mean? Okay. Oh, the, the from the director? Yeah. That's okay. All right. I wanted to because last month, the one we recorded a full month ago, uh had the from the director of a nightmare on elm street this is a, in a similar vein i don't think you'll necessarily know what this is based on his filmography but no <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to take a gamble and see if you would because this was i think you would know less see this all right so <laughs> the poster is a nice little frame that looks like there's uh actually it's like flowers and millipedes going around the frame um attention and in the the center of the portrait it's it's sort of like a um oh my god what's that that artist with the with the apple magritte in the face magritte it's like a magritte painting but it's just like it's a hat and a typewriter as the guy's face but the typewriter is all lopsided um dude has a wedding band on so clearly it's a there's some sort of marriage oh, wow. story involved. I didn't even pick up on that, but that's and good. That's good. Yeah, this and is all just perfect. For this. And the yeah. got a watch. He's got a wedding band, and he's trying to type his face, mm-hmm. but it's not. Oh yeah, not he's working out. To type the Q. He's hitting the Q. He oh a- God, it's the origin of wow. Q. Um, Star Trek. The aliens are. <laughs> Q the winged serpent. Right. <laughs> it's literally yeah. He's pressing the Q. Button. looking at this i kind of notice like the the gap where the the bars for typing it kind of looks like a singular eye like he's a cyclops a little bit that's just yeah, how like, it, how a typewriter would like look where the um it yeah because where, where all the letters skew up at the top yeah interesting yeah. so all right from the director of dead ringers and the fly so i'm gonna guess this is a cronenberg film yeah i get good job. Okay. uh past that i don't know this is some sort of like secret window writer's block type movie um guys, he's, writing about writers. he's trying to figure himself out his wife's about to leave him he can't write for shit and obviously because it's david cronenberg he's going to have some sort of body horror <laughs> after he's about that as he's trying to <laughs> figure this out he does he he physically turns into a typewriter I like like he becomes the one thing that he can't control, which is his uh, writing. I'm thinking the the weird leaflet design around the frame has to deal with like this guy gets infected by bugs or something. Oh wait a minute, is this is this the metamorphosis? No, no, damn it! All right, I was. No, that's why I was hoping maybe you might think that actually. Yeah. A what? Um, because you might not bring know that up in the movie yeah, though. This film. They bring up uh, Kafka in the movie. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Again, like every poster boy, I don't know what actually happens. Oh, you don't? I never do. I should look up the plot before I, I try to get Jeff. I think there was one or two movies that you... you the you know, one, there were two that, okay. like, don't tell the mom the babysitter's dead, I knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, this uh, is Suburban the, Commander, I kind of knew. The writer, as opposed to Zarida. 
no no okay sort of married to this gig that he's in right like you know he's got like we very clearly hey, see the wedding ring but like you Jimmy know and Jeff have but married honest, to the like, job the way, the way that his necklace or his shirt or something underneath it's just like shirt, you know no it's, that's a necktie it's, it's, it's connecting the, the the visual uh line where the eye should travel from the ring to the typewriter con- bonding the two sure <laughs> I mean, you know, um, I don't think you're gonna. I, well, it's framed like a piece of artwork. Like, we're, wait, wait, wait. Like, maybe like, we're framing this. Like maybe reticent. we're framing this the wrong way. Maybe he's hitting himself in the face with the typewriter. Yeah. Because he just can't. So he's he beca- can't he's get through this anymore. Art. So you sort of already got the um, the plot you might have done, and uh, you know, want to give me one more uh, title before I give you a tagline? Uh, I think I, I think I'd do a tagline. I don't know if it's just two. He I might know this writer actually. I might give you the. You might know the novelist that the writers. I actually don't remember what comes next when I hit the next button. Oh, interesting. So. Oh, weird. Oh, it's a tagline. Oh, okay. All right. So, why don't you guess one more title? And we'll see if uh, the tagline helps. Keystroke. Keystroke. I don't know. That's yeah, a good like yeah. deadline. Having, it's never going to give you. He's like about to finish his great American novel, and then he just has a stroke. Typo. <laughs> typo. Typo. Yeah. All right. Here is the his tagline. blood is typo. <laughs> mm. Exterminate all rational thought. Okay, so we've got to do it's, it's bugs. There's bugs. Is this bugsy? This is not bugsy. <laughs> this is, yeah, we tricked you. This, <laughs> literal bugs. Um, exterminate all rational thought. Okay. Oh, well, Karl Marx. The exterminator. <laughs> not the case. Hang on. I don't think there's anything else I can give you. Eraser head. <laughs> it is kind of Lynchian in a way. Uh. So Spooky typewriter, the movie. All right, no, hang on, hang on. on. I got it. it. Um, Qwerty. I don't know. (laughs) All right, here we go. All right, (laughs) naked lunch. What? That nothing to do with. They never bring up the title. God, I hate. Have ever gotten it from the David Cronenberg or William S. Not a not. Maybe invite you to lunch. Yeah, I mean William S. Burroughs wrote Naked Lunch, so yeah, that's the only reason you would get it. I thought maybe he would know the uh, novelist William S. Burroughs. Maybe that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what is this actually about? Corey? Oh, because is this weirdly autobiographical in a way? Oh, because um, do you know anything about William S. Burroughs? Actually, I did read that he uh, accidentally killed his wife. Recently. He did accidentally kill his wife. It's depicted in the movie. They're playing yeah. a game of William Tell. Mm, she, puts why? A glass, I don't know. she puts a glass on top of her head and he accidentally shoots her in the middle of the forehead. Um. <laughs> yeah. What, what happened was, I believe he says he doesn't have any recollection of what happened that night, but later felt regret. Yeah, he's in a fugue state, apparently. Because yeah. they were all drunk out of their minds. Sure. Perfect. Uh, so I guess he first came, but it, the morbid <laughs> thing is, in a quote, he said, if I hadn't killed my wife, I don't know if I'd have became a writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is uh, Peter Weller is his stand in, in the movie, and he plays like a, a writer who's struggling. And to get by, he uh, is a bug exterminator. But ah. him and his wife, played by Judy Davis, are getting high on the bug powder that they uh-huh. use. So I guess he gets so addicted to the bug powder that he starts to have hallucinations of this kind of Saudi Arabia-esque dimension called the Interzone, where these interlopers are trying to come in, these bug-like interlopers are trying to invade our dimension. Okay. It's... Uh, existence. Yeah, kind of. Although that had more of a streamlined plot. This is almost indecipherable. <laughs> okay. Um, the creature designs are fun. I didn't really... At a certain point, Peter Weller's deadpan delivery just became kind of grating. Mm. I needed something tangible to grasp onto emotionally in the movie, 
and it, there, there just wasn't any mm. there wasn't any port way for me even getting into the movie mm-hmm. um it kind of reminded me of uh you ever seen video drone no it's just a lot of grotesque images and he's trying to make a statement about television and our addiction to it i'm just like this movie's just repulsive I know he's trying to make a point about it, but the plot's not strong enough for me to care. Uh, I mean, you could probably make a movie about that today with internet, with the internet. Well, I was gonna say the two movies that are on the on the poster, Dead Ringers and The Flyer, are way better than this. Movie. That's sort of what he does with existence too. It's like your relationship to. Yeah, I didn't care for that either. So I only like it because Jude Law's in it. It's weird. Uh, the Cronenberg's one of those mo- one of those directors where he either does a masterpiece or he does a disaster. It's- there's no yeah. a masterpiece or a disaster piece yeah yeah, yeah. the disaster artist yeah. all right well uh to wrap things up i was gonna present to you obviously we have a cast full of uh famous actors though most of them really only are known for star trek so i'm gonna pivot towards the uh main guest in the film christopher Plummer. what was your favorite Christopher Plummer film. He passed away earlier this year. You're so going to say Beginners. I know this you. This can be our uh, our our homage to... Kristen's picking Beginners. I know. We'll see. Knives we'll Out. Of his filmography. Oh, yeah. Knives Out. Knives Out. Well, no, well, Knives Out was a good movie. That was a good send-off for him. Yeah. But I feel like that's more of a... Uh, uh, um, uh, wow. Uh, dude that played like James you, Bond. I think feel like that's his movie. I feel like you, Daniel Craig. I yeah, feel like you, all, you. you already used Knives Out for um, Don Johnson. Oh, so we can't reuse movies that we've used previously? Technically, is that you a can. rule? Oh, you can, but I'm just pointing out like you did it four episodes ago. I got a good one. Nicholas Nickleby. Oh, yeah. He's the villain, he's the uncle. And who can forget all the money in the world? <laughs> Yeah, he's good in that. <laughs> what did you say, uh, Jimmy? Oh, I didn't say anything because no, I like I, was... I need to look at the list. <laughs> he's got to look it up. I was like, he's in a lot. I know what you're gonna pick. You're gonna pick Cracker Jack. Like, I'm going with beginners. I knew it. What Skyrim. Else? Oh, <laughs> Mike was in the girl with the dragon tattoo. I forgot. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's good. Right. Uh. Oh, God, he played Charles Muntz in Up. Yes, he did. Both characters from Up died this year. Well, not the kid. Well, <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> old, the old men died. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Actually, wait, can I change my yeah. vote? Sure. The insider. Oh, perfect. I knew you might do that one. Yeah. Yeah, Nicholas Nickleby threw me off, so. Wait, oh, you mean 12 Monkeys? Yes. Holy shit. Great movie, too. Yeah, he's the uh, administrator. There's a couple I could have chosen here. Yeah. He's in Beautiful could've, Mind. Could have picked Syriana, yeah, no. too. Which one? Syriana. Oh, Syriana, yeah. I, what, oh, he's what? good in that. It's been, a while since, <laughs> like, it's been a while since I've seen Malcolm X, but like he's in Malcolm X. He is in Malcolm X. Sure. Oh. He yeah. was the narrator in the Madeline Lost in Paris? Yes, sir. Wait, oh, my God. God. Yeah, he's in Rocket Doodle Doo and an American Tale. Oh, wait, there, you know what's funny? We say rock a doodle doo. There's no doo. He was in rock a doodle. Rock a doodle. Oh, oh yeah. You just threw me off there. Yeah. yeah no, right? I, I, Don't bring up that movie. <laughs> this, is, this is great that I'm going through the list because I'm just listening off things that, like, you know, people like. There's a film in there that I had never heard of that I'm kind of interested in The Royal Hunt of the Sun. It's about Pizarro and taking over the Incas. Oh. Kind of interesting. It was apparently he had done it as a play. He played Pizarro in the play. But then played the Aztec, or I guess it's the Aztecs. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's so glad yeah. nobody picks Sound of Music. He's in an American Tale. Oh, right. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm just like, I'm just. God, he's been in everything. Jesus. He started. He's, he's, he's like Tim Curry. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Except, you know, he was half of the classic films of today. Yeah. That's why I love him. Like, what the hell? But That's yeah, no, we're, my. We're going to vote for him for the egg. But on, on the Sound of Music, I just. I can't stand that movie. No, it's a terrible because, because the first time the first time I ever yeah. saw the play They're was really I was violently ill that night. So I just have this like oh, that's I how cannot, I sure the movie didn't cause that. I can't <laughs> listen to anything from the sound of music without right. being violently I'm, I'm ill. Just, it was is. Cyrano. You know, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go ahead and just pick out like mm, damn. All right. There's like movies in the in the in the 1960s that like 
I'm pretty sure I've seen, but I haven't. Silent seen Partner is pretty damn good. So like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna. It's gonna be a toss up between Battle of Britain and Waterloo. Battle of Britain's a great film. Yeah. No, like. So well, where are we gonna go with? Obviously, I have Beginners. Insider. Insider. What do you think, Jeff? Uh, knives out. Okay. <laughs> Stick with knives out and Stick with knives Battle, out. Battle Britain and Waterloo toss up. We'll, we'll we'll keep Battle of Britain. Yeah, right Battle of Britain. But like, what the? Cool. Okay. He had a he had a long um, eclectic career. He has 182 credits. Yeah. Didn't get his Oscar nomination until 2009 for The Last Station. One two years later for Beginners. Mm-hmm. And then got one last one for uh, All the Money in the World. Right. So. Which was originally going to be him. That and cleanup. So. Rest in peace, Chrissy Plums. <laughs> DP. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, remember to rate, review, subscribe, uh, like our posts on YouTube or iTunes. Uh, I saw a couple of uh, star ratings on there recently. So I'm very happy people are at least doing that, e- even if you're not commenting. I want to hear from you. I want to know if you have any ideas for what we should watch in 92, because we're about to pick that when we when we do our best of next month. We're going to... Uh, Decide what we'll be doing for 1992. So if you have any ideas, you can comment in this one and uh, then we'll be able to pick something out. So uh, hopefully you have a good Christmas. Yeah, this is it for the year because the best of will come out January 7th, I think, somewhere in the first week of January. So hopefully you have a good rest of your 19, well, 20, 2021. Yeah, for us it'll be 1990. Yeah, we're stuck in the past. Yeah, we're stuck in the past. With the undiscovered decade. Yeah, we're... Uh... <clears throat> Yeah. Fire. Mm-hmm.